Hey, welcome back to this series. So this is gonna be the last video in right in the back end of our application. We're gonna uh, add two more DB triggers to finish up the functionality of our server logic or our serverless logic, I guess. But before we do that, I want to fix a couple of things. So let's start with users. Let's go to users.js and in the sign up, so yeah, here in the sign up, we uh, here at the bottom when we return errors. Here, if an, a server error happens, I want to actually return something to the client. So let's say uh, general, and uh, not error like general. And I want to say something went wrong. Please try again. Just in case this happens, we will show it in the front end. And one other, th another thing here, when we handle our e authentication error in login, we want to, we don't want to check for this password thing. We just want to return in general wrong credentials. And by the way, if you want, there is two, um, status codes, two error status codes, two main ones related to, uh, login in the, oops, the auth wrong password and the auth, uh, user not found. It's not recommended, but you can actually use them to show on your front end that either this user doesn't exist or it's the wrong password. But uh, I'll stick to the safe, just return like this, just return um, general wrong credentials, please try again. Uh, but you, it's up to you, what do you wanna do? All right, so two more things in screen.js, uh, up, all the way up here in get all screams. We want to get the user image of the of the post so that we can show it in the post card. So doc user image equals doc dot data dot user image. And down here in uh, comment on scream, when we validate the body, we want to return the error as comment must not be empty. All right, cool. So these are the fixes. Now let's add our DB triggers. But actually, uh, I wanted to fix more stuff here. If you have been wondering why you've been getting these uh, weird errors from our DB triggers saying function returned undefined expected promise or value, uh, I, I tried before returning zero and it doesn't work. You either return a Boolean value like true or false or you just return a promise. So what we're gonna do on our triggers is uh, here, for example, in, well, we're gonna change all of them, so here, uh, when we do our promise here, we add the return in front of it. So we return this promise and don't worry, just because we wrote return here doesn't mean it, the execution stops here. We actually get through here. And then here, when we return this promise, we don't do another dot then and return nothing. We just do like this and we don't return anything when consoling the error. We just do that. And in delete notification, we actually do return. Uh, db dot doc dot whatever dot delete and then we remove this then block and here as well on create notification on comment we return db dot doc and we remove this block and one thing that I wanted to fix I noticed that we are creating a notification on like and on comment, even when we like our own posts, which is obviously not a good thing. Uh, so what we need to do here, when we check um, if document dot exists, we also need to check um, that the ID, so not the ID, the handle of this, uh, for example, of this uh, like is not the same with the handle of the post because what this would mean it would mean the person that liked this post is the same person that posted this screen so we don't want to notify them if that's the case so what we want to do here is and no not here so if doc exists and doc dot data dot user handle so this refers to the screen does not equal snap, not span, snap shot dot data dot user handle. So this would be the like. Actually, let me make sure it's user handle. So likes, yeah, they have a user handle. So if we do this and we would 
copy this and we would go to create notification on comment and we do the same right here. Now we no longer get notifications if we like our own post or uh, our own screen or comment or our own screen. All right, so now I wanna add two more triggers. The first one is that, uh, what I wanna do is that if a user, uh, so for example, right now we have screams and each scream has an image URL, a user image of the user image at the time they created this scream. What I wanna do now, if the user changes their profile picture, I wanna add a DB trigger that actually changes the user image of uh, all the screams submitted by this user to show them as well on the card. So let's add a new uh, new trigger here called export, um, called, well, exports dot, and we're gonna call it on user image change. And this will be a functions. And for me, I'm gonna add region, Europe, West one, and Firestore dot what is this going to be i think it's yeah on an up, on update on update and we will the doc wait on update wait actually i forgot to change document so document so we need to say first what document we want to listen to so slash user slash curly braces user id and then we want to say on update so on update and this will take a, a change in context. We don't need context, so we just take change. And what's cool about this change object is that it has two properties. So let's actually console log them so you see how this works. So let's do console log change dot before dot data. And if we were to just copy this and then type after here. It's, it's exactly that. Uh, this snapshot has two values, the before, before it was edited, and then the after. So we can compare these and we can see what's actually changed. So what we want to do here is we want to re uh, change the image of the, the posts that this user has created. Uh, actually, this is we're going to change multiple documents, potentially. So we need to do a batch, re uh, not read, write, a batch write. So let's do let batch equals db dot batch. As a function like this. And then here we do return db dot collection screams. Where, oops, what is this? What am I doing? Okay, so where uh, what is it? User handle equal equals um, what is it equal actually? Yeah, change. We have the data and change. Change dot doesn't matter which one we use because we can't use we can't change the user ID a uh, user handle anyway. So change dot before dot data dot um, it's just handle in the uh, document of the user. And we do get, and the, then here we get data. So data dot for each, so for each document that this user has created, I'm going to do const scream equals db dot doc backtick slash screams slash dollar sign curly braces doc dot id so this is the document and here we do batch dot update and we pass the document which is scream and our change would be user image will now be change dot after so this uh, the snapshot of after the change of this user document dot data dot image url all right, so here after the for each, yeah, we're after the for each here. So we do return batch dot commit. Yeah, that's it. So, oh, actually, oh, we need let's pay, we need to only do this if the user image uh, or the image URL has changed because the user can also change the um 
what we call them the, the details like the bio the website and the location and we don't want to run this uh, batch uh, right if they didn't actually change their image so what we want to do here if we want to do it we want to check if change dot before dot data dot um, image URL does not equal change dot after dot data dot image URL so we'll execute this only if the image URL of this user document has changed let's do a console here just to make sure that it's only executing when the image changes image has changed and yeah I, I believe this is it we can actually test this um, yeah but actually let's write the other trigger and then let's test both of them to save time I don't want to make this video long because the last one was quite long um, so export dot so for this one what I want to do is um, a problem is that if we have screams and each screen could have likes and comments and notifications and if a user deletes their screen what I want to do is that I want the uh, trigger to delete all the notifications the likes and the comments that are related to that one screen that was deleted all right so we'll call this expose dot on screen screen deleted or on screen delete Let's do functions well, let's copy this I don't like writing this <laughs> let's do functions functions dot region the same dot document screams scream ID dot on delete and here we are gonna have a snapshot and the context I have an arrow function here uh, we're not going to need the snapshot. We're just going to need the context because the uh, context is has the parameters that we have in the URL. So let's do const scream id equals context dot params dot um, scream your uh, scream id, which is in the URL. And let's do our batch here. So const batch equals actually here we could have made it into a const as well const batch equals that so batch equals db dot batch it's a function like this and now we do return db dot collection let's start with comments comments where dot where um scream id equals scream id dot get wait is it yeah yeah okay so dot get dot then and then we have data now data dot for each doc um let's do can we do it in one line Yeah, batch dot delete, and we can say db dot doc backtick slash comments slash dollar sign uh, doc dot id like this. Yeah, this is. I think this is it. Yeah, slash comments slash doc dot id. Yep. Now we need to also um, after the for each, we need to delete as well the uh, likes. So let's do return db dot collection likes. Oh my god! <laughs> Where scream id equals scream id I think we can copy this block and then we just paste it and what we do here delete slash likes slash doc dot id like this and then so we've looked for comments and then deleted them and then we looked for likes and then deleted them now we look for notifications 
and then paste this oops not this let's paste this block yeah so we paste this block and so data and delete slash notification slash this id and then here we just return uh, batch dot commit like this and we do a catch block so catch error um, console dot error the error all right so we have to deploy because these are db triggers so firebase deploy okay let's test out our so what's cool about db triggers is that we don't have to actually just uh, send a request we can change stuff in the database here on the interface and it will trigger the db triggers so if we were to go to this okay so this screen was submitted by user let's change the user the user dot image url right here all right so let's change this from oops no image to no image is like with an s even though that this image doesn't exist but the database knows nothing about actual images so let's look for change here this should change to no images and it does cool so the db trigger is working and if we go to functions and to logs we scroll down you see this is the before and this is the after so this is the before and you see here the before had no image and then the after had no images so these are the before and after and here the image has changed was triggered this uh this uh conditional actually here in the if we need to do as well an else let's do else return uh true in case actually it goes through this because it can go if the user just changes their details or just if I were to go here and change something that's not the image URL actually let me open this on a different window so I don't keep waiting for it so here if I were to go to user and change something else like uh, I don't know location would be London again and I'll do update and if I were to go to screens of course nothing changes and if I were to go to the logs because that trigger will still happen. Yeah, that trick. Oh, but I think it's because it hasn't been deployed properly. So, okay, let's just change something one more time. So let's change, for example, not the email, the website from google.com to Twitter. And then if we would look here, we're still oh we're still getting function returned undefined because uh, it went through here and this uh, this was not satisfied this condition so we didn't return anything but with our newly deployed code this this problem should go away it doesn't or does it oh it does okay so we get before we get after so here we changed Google to Twitter but image hasn't changed so that block of code of course didn't get executed cool so let's test out as well uh, us deleting our own post so we will log in as user because user has this screen and then there are these notifications that are related to this screen so you see the id is starting with 14 and it's this post and here the likes are these two likes are related to the screen and then this comment as well is related to the screen so if you were to delete this screen all these comments and likes and notifications should be deleted so let's make sure that that's the case. So we log in as user. We take the to token and let's do slash API slash scream, scream slash, and then we change this to a delete request. We remove the body and let's get the ID of this scream and we do this and this should delete the screen it says unauthorized oh because we didn't add oh oh snap i have to log in again we didn't add that token and now i don't have it in the clipboard anymore <laughs> sorry guys oh i changed this to a post let's get a token let me put the token in the authorization 
Do I spell this correctly? Auto, yeah, like this authorization. Cool. Barrel token, and then change this to a delete. Take the ID from here to slash scream slash the ID and it's a delete we send it scream deleted successfully and then we go here so everything should be deleted from these three uh, collections Okay, I must have uh, made a mistake in the code. Okay, it says in the log it says data dot for each is not a function. Oh, what am I doing? Of course, uh, here when we return these db dot collection dot whatever, here of course we do get can't get anything without chaining get after it just like here okay it should work now let's save and let's deploy my bad and we need to create that uh, that scream again manually because it's deleted now so let's get the ID of that scream from here Screams. Oh, the collection is gone because it was the only scream there. So the screams and the ID is this and Well, it's gonna have a user handle of user and a body of This is the scream um, what else we need? They created at. It doesn't matter. Could could just be anything. Let's give it actually a string. I don't know. Just this. Just give it a like count of three or two number. These don't matter, guys. We're gonna delete it anyways. So why did that one go away? So. Number is one. Okay, I think this is it. Yeah. All right, we create it. Let's try to delete it again. This code has been deployed, and this time when we delete it, it should actually the our code should delete the notifications, the likes, and the comments. So let's send this request. Scream deleted successfully. All right, notifications deleted, comments deleted, and likes deleted. Uh, sorry about that mistake, guys. One more thing, though. If we would go to the Google Firestore REST API documentation page, uh, you could find that th this is basically a, a REST API that any Firestore or Firebase a um, application can use to access their database. So if we would actually copy this endpoint right here up to slash documents, and if we were to go to Postman, and paste this here and then get our project ID. We can get our project ID from our config file. So this is our project ID. Let's copy that. So if we paste it here and we do, let's say document slash screams and send a get request, it will actually Oh, we have no screams. Let's try users. Yeah, we'll actually get our users formatted in a different way, but it will still actually get our users, which is, of course, a big no-no. It's a big security um, hole. So let's patch that hole. So if we were to go to Firebase and go to database and then go to rules, here, because what we're doing is we're using only the admin SDK to access our database, 
uh, here instead of allow read and write, we can say allowed read and write colon if false, which means don't allow read and write basically. So we're locking down our, our database. So now if we were to go back to uh, Postman and we send this request, it will say unauthorized. But if we were to send a request at our endpoint, out our API endpoint at slash screams, we will still get our screams. Now we get an empty array because we have no screams right now, but it's a 200. We did get the data from the server. So yeah, this is the last thing that I wanted to add to actually finish off the uh, backend. So yeah, guys, we're done with the backend and uh, now we will start working with the React applications. So look forward to that. Thank you for watching. And please, if you're enjoying this series, if you're enjoying my videos, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It would mean a lot to me. Um, hit the bell button as well. So you would be notified whenever I upload a new video. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll hope to see you soon. Bye.